Hey, 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 top of the morning to you. This is Brian here to talk to you about my five pillars, God, family, abundant life, adventure, and technology. Some of you might be saying, hey, Brian, it's not morning in central time zone where you are. How can you do top of the morning to you? Well, top of the morning is a half full philosophy that if you got the morning going on for you, you got plenty of time in the rest of the day and everything is going good. So top of the morning to you is just a mindset. It's not a time of day. And I want you to have the right mindset so that you too can live an abundant life and have an eternal life by being saved with a relationship with God and Jesus Christ. I am in the middle of reading. Actually, I read it. I listened to it. I read it again. I'm, I just read chapter two of Atomic Habits by James Clear. And today I'm just going to kind of sum that up so I can read on. I'm trying to read and stop until I talk to you guys about what's going on in chapter two, because then I won't mix up the ideas. The title of chapter two is How Your Habits Shape Your Identity and Vice Versa. Um, a lot of this chapter reminded me of that statement from the first chapter from Zig Ziglar, um, from my experience of be, do, and have. First, you got to be that, be yourself, be your identity, be what you want to be, be what God created you to be, do the things that being that would do and have the bounties and the abundant life that result from being and doing those two things. Diving into the book, my first um, highlight was changing our habits is challenging for two reasons. We try to change the wrong thing and we try to change our habits in the wrong way. And that was good impact for this chapter, kind of introduce it, kind of set the stage, get me drawn in. Um, Oftentimes our habits and things are all about outcomes. And that's what we said when we we're talking about chapter one is looking at what the end result is and not looking at the being. Who do we have to be to have that end result? Millions of people have that end result or thousands or hundreds. And if you want it, if you really want it, if it's really the why, going to Simon Sinek, you'll be everything that leads up to that. Um, next quote from the chapter on page 30. Outcomes are what you get. Process is about what you do. And identity is about what you believe. If you believe you can get there and you want to get there and you want it more than anything else, you can usually get there. Um, sure, there's exceptions. And even some of those exception stories break. Oh, I'm three feet tall. I can't be a great basketball player. And... It seems like you can't, but even people, the few and the far between, have broken some of those um, limitations, those upper limits, those upper limits. Um, so remember, don't be hoping your behavior will change by carrying your same beliefs. If you want something to change, you need to have new beliefs. You need to create that new identity. You need to create the new be. Who am I going to be? What am I going to be? Um, your old identity, from page 32, can sabotage your new plans for change. If you're going to be that new person, don't let your old identity come in and corrupt your plans. Um, if your identity is someone who consumes rather than creates, you'll be continually pulled toward spending rather than earning. And I talked about that a couple weeks ago, about the how much do you consume and how much do you create? How much of your time are you making something, learning something, doing something? How much are you just sucking it up? I had my podcast overdose um, years ago, and I run into that kind of thing every once in a while where I'm consuming too much content. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm so full of ideas and not taking any action. You know what happens? Nothing. 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 Chapter, uh, page 33, the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when your habit becomes part of your identity. When you have a habit that's like, yeah, I just do that. Like brushing my teeth is just, it's who I am. 
maybe missed three times a year. Um, and it's like I'm traveling and we're going into a hotel and we drove all night going to Colorado or something with the kids and uh, just gonna go to sleep. So it's just my identity. If I'm at home or if I'm at a regular hotel or on a retreat weekend or something, I brush my teeth. So what habits um, are part of your identity and how did they get there? What were you being? What did you choose to do because of that being that you chose um, that is part of your identity is automagic and that's what we need the more we automagic things the less effort it takes to do things page 33 again it's one thing to say I'm the type of person who wants this it's a very different thing to say I'm the type of person who is this one of the stories in the chapter talks about um, smoking. Imagine two people. Hey, you want a cigarette? No, I'm trying to quit is a statement. Hey, you want a cigarette? No, I don't smoke is a statement. One of those speaks stronger and more powerfully to me. You're trying to quit. Actually, it's funny. One of them is more powerful. I don't smoke is more powerful. But if someone who's offering you a cigarette Here's the first one. They might be softer on you. Maybe not. I'm trying to quit. Okay, I'll respect that. I don't smoke. Oh, well, you should try it. Is then that how it goes? But for the internal voice, what's going on in your head, that self-talk is really crucial. And when you make that self-talk public, I don't smoke. I don't eat sweets. I don't drink. Um, as an absolute, instead of a... Partial commitment, uh, uncommitted, um, non-incomplete statement. Make it a complete statement. I eat healthy. I work out three days a week. What are those things that you stand for? What do you do? True behavior change is identity change. That's from the book on page 34. And progress requires unlearning. We have to unlearn some of the stupid stuff that we've brought into our life and unlearning takes just as much effort as learning but remember the story of the bad spirit that got cleared out of the dude's head in the bible and he came back later and said oh look the apartment's empty and he went and got seven of his bad spirit friends and filled that guy up and made him go mad the same thing goes with unlearning habits we need to replace those habits that we cast out with new habits that come in that change our identity. So we are in control of our identity. We change our identity. We identify what our identity is. And if you don't do that on purpose, you're not in control of your identity. You need to do that on purpose. And when you start taking these habits on page 37 to where, quote, evidence accumulates. When you do these habits, when you do those things that match your B, that evidence of what you've done kind of go, goes with the being. So you got the being and the doing. The doing is the evidence for that. And then the having, well, those are the results or the outcomes. Three more quotes here from the chapter and then we'll wrap it up for today. Um, it is a simple two-step process. Decide the person you want to be and prove it to yourself with little do's. Not directly from the book. Prove it to yourself with small wins. Who do you want to be? And do it. Make those small wins. Build up that evidence. Build it for yourself. Build it for your friends and family. And build it for the world. The focus should always be on becoming the type of person not the particular outcome. What type of person be do you want to be? What, what are you going to be and not the outcome? The outcomes are natural. They just follow. When you're that kind of person that does those kind of things, you have the outcome. But focus on the person, not getting a particular outcome. And the last quote from the book in chapter two in Atomic Habits. Habits can help you achieve all of these things, 
But fundamentally, they are not about having something. They are about becoming someone. Who are you about to become? God created you. He loves you. He created you for a purpose. What is that purpose? What are you to become? You decide what you're going to become and come back tomorrow or the next day or the next day. Come back to the next top of the morning to you. But for now, you be blessed.